Okay, so it's uh, one o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started today. All right, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good, good. how are you? Really good. Good, good. good. Yeah, I'm a little sleepy. I uh, had a little trouble sleeping last night, but it's, uh, you know, hanging in there. So we're in week nine, so, you know, next week we'll start getting into the double-digit week, so that's when things uh, really start ramping up. Yeah, weather is cooler now. I, I like that, too. So there's a question in the chat about when's the midterm. So I think the midterm will be not next week, but the week after that. Um, and it's planned for Thursday. So it's going to be Thursday of week 11. Um, so that's two weeks from today. That's going to be the midterm. So next week, um, you know, I'll, I'll do the same thing I did last time. So I'll post a study guide um, for the uh, for the midterm. I'll do a, a remote um, review session just like I did last time, too. So. Uh, because you know, next week's the last time we're going to see economics. Um, I'm going to need the I'm going to need the whole week to to go over inflation, which is our last topic. Um, I'm going to do just a remote um, or a pre-recorded review session. So, you know, so I'll put up a poll, see you know what people want to uh, uh, want to see in the review session, and then I'll, I'll post that you know a week before the midterm, so you guys have that too to study. Okay. Um, in terms of content for the midterm, so it's uh it's it's not going to be cumulative. Um, so I'm not going to test you explicitly on the stuff we did before the midterm. So I'm not going to ask you to, to do just a straight up present worth or annual cash flow or any of that. Um, that said, you will need stuff before from the first uh, from the first midterm, like how to compute present worth um, or how to compute things like, you know, annual cash flow. So you can see that we're still using that stuff in, in the topics we're covering now, but I'm not going to explicitly test you on that stuff. So all the problems will be from either uh, the last homework, which you guys turned in this week and the next homework, which is, uh, you know, what you guys have on, on you right now, okay? Um, so that's the other announcement. So I, I posted the new homework, um, you know, yesterday, uh, yesterday evening. Um, and then that's going to be due uh, sometime before the midterm. Let me double check just to make sure. November 3rd. November 3rd, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's going to be Tuesday, okay? Um, all right, so that, that'll actually be right before the midterm. So I'll do the same thing as, as last time where... Um, you know, right when you guys turn in everything for the uh, for the midterm, uh, or for, turn in everything for the homework, I'm going to post the solutions for that, just so you'll have that available to study as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so the plan for today is uh, uh, we're just going to finish up our notes on replacement analysis. So it's not too too much. Um, so we finish early, we can we can start inflation a little bit. Um, but besides that, I um, I do want to mention something. So uh, so I know a few people kind of just joined in the last couple minutes. Um, but it's with it's this is uh, with regards to the final project. So um, so everyone I think everyone knows by this point that the final project is a group project And so you're gonna need to do it in groups of five. Uh, so five is a fairly large um, number for a group for a group um, But you know just because this class is a little bit bigger and, and you know I, I think I kind of had to adjust that just to make sure that we all have time for the final presentations at the end Okay. Um, and so you guys are free to choose your groups. So if you if you have a group of five already, you know, that's great um, but if you, uh, if, um, you know, if you want to find a group, um, you can either, you know, use the Discord. So I, I've seen people have been using that to organize groups, which is great. Which, so I think that's a great use for it. Uh, or, you know, if, if you need, um, you know, if you want to reach out to me, send me an email to say, you know, if you can help me, you know, find a group, um, you know, that would be great. Um, I can, I'm happy to do that as well. Okay. Because uh, I know with, uh, with, you know, the virtual instruction, it's really hard to kind of interact with people and you don't know, you know, should you email them? Should you message them? So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help facilitate any of that as well. So, um, and so my plan right now is to open up the sign up sheet for um, the case studies on end of the end of next week. Um, and so if you can have your groups formed by then and, you know, and pick, you know, which case study that you want and, and have like a top three list, um, that, then that would be great. So, you know, if you if you need help finding a group, definitely let me know sooner rather than later. Then I can help uh, facilitate that before the signups go live. Okay. Uh, okay. Are there any questions on that, or uh, any questions on anything before we get started today? Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay. So the uh, uh, let's pick up right where we left off on Tuesday. So remember the the topic for this week is replacement analysis. And remember, the, the whole idea with replacement analysis is to use our economic tools to find out when is the best time to replace an existing asset. Okay? 
Because once you get out into the workforce uh, and you start working on these, you know, big engineering products, you're going to be managing, um, or at least helping to manage, you know, a lot of heavy machinery. Because oftentimes when you're doing engineering, um, you know, it, we're not like Iron Man, where we can just kind of pull together like a like a suit in, just from scraps in our garage. So, you know, it involves a lot of heavy machinery and a lot a lot of expensive, you know, equipment that you're going to need to manage. Okay? Um, and oftentimes, you know, these, you know, I, I wish I often all the time, you know, machines and stuff they they break down eventually. So you know, you're going to need to know when is the best time to replace. Okay? And so I think where we left off last week is, is, is kind of pulling together kind of two, uh, two aspects. Okay. Cause the, ultimately the, um, the criteria which you should use to de um, determine if something's going to be replaced is the following. Okay. And so the first thing um, that you should do, uh, which we haven't learned yet, so that's gonna be the first thing that we do um, for today, is to compute the marginal cost of ownership of an existing asset. Okay. And what that means basically is uh, we're basically gonna compute how much it's gonna cost um, you or the company to own an asset for one more year. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna compare that to the minimum EUAC um, or economic life of a new piece of equipment. Okay. Because remember what that minimum EUAC represents. So what, what that represents is the minimum yearly cost um, for, um, for owning a new piece of equipment. Okay? Uh, and so we did these calculations last time where we took things into account like the initial cost, uh, the rising maintenance costs, um, and differing salvage values. And we basically came up with a number to say that if we kept this, if we bought this piece of equipment and kept it for you know, X amount of years, where X was you know, the economic life, then you know, it would cost us this amount each year to and so once the marginal cost of ownership exceeds this minimum EUAC, right? So um, basically what it says, it's gonna cost us more money to keep this thing running for one more year than it is to buy a new one. Um, then this is, this is when we need to replace. Because economically, you know, that, that doesn't make sense. So, you know, if just to kind of put some numbers on this. So say that you have like, a, like an old car, right? But you know your old car has a ton of problems. And so you anticipate in the upcoming year that you're going to have to take it in for major maintenance. You have to get, you know, maybe like spark plug replaced, you know, get new tires and stuff like that. You know, it's going to cost you like, um, let's say $7,000 for your old car, um, you know, just to, just to keep it running for just one more year. Um, you compare that, you buy a new car, you know, the new car, you know, obviously is going to cost a lot. It might cost like $15,000, $16,000. But if you keep that for, let's say, you know, seven years, then the yearly cost of, of having that new car is going to be something on, in the order of maybe like $3,000, $4,000, right? And so if you compare those two numbers, so you're saying like, you know, it's going to cost me a lot of money today to buy this new car, but year to year on average is going to cost me less than what it is to keep this old car running. And so that's kind of the thought process on, you know, when you need to, uh, to uh, perform a replacement. Okay? And, that's the, and that's, the, that's the thought process behind this, what's, what we call replacement analysis. Okay? And so what we're going to do today is we're going to, do, we're going to learn how to do kind of the second half, or I guess the first half of this uh, calculation, which is how to compute the marginal cost of ownership. Okay? And it's not, it's, not that, uh, it's not that difficult. It's just you kind of have to just, uh, you know, um, keep a couple things in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start doing that. Okay. Right. And so just like we mentioned, the marginal cost of ownership is the cost to keep an asset running for one more year. Okay. 
and there's usually you know uh, uh, two types of uh, um, two type two types of of, um, of factors that go into this. Okay? So the first factor is, is pretty simple. So the first factor is just any kind of maintenance or upkeep that you have to do. Okay. And so most pieces, uh, most big pieces of equipment, it's going to cost you money to just to maintain it. So that, that we know. Okay. Um, and the other factor that goes into this is the fact that, you know, if you hold on to your, your a piece of equipment for one more year, then the salvage value is going to go down or the sale value will decrease. And so one way that you can think about it is say, you know, if you can sell, um, you know, your, your piece of equipment for say, you know, like a thousand dollars a day, but then if you wait a year, it's value gonna, is going to go down by, you know, by $200, then that's an additional cost of keeping your, uh, your piece of machine, uh, your piece of equipment. Um, you have, you incur kind of an additional $200 because the sale value goes down. Okay. And so, you know, the, the maintenance and upkeep costs is usually, you know, pretty straightforward. We can just, you know, add that to it. Um, but this factor right here, it's, it's, there's, there's a little bit of a wrinkle in how we, uh, we compute this. And it has to do with the fact that, you know, since we're considering a cost, a salvage value in the future, we have to take our interest rates into it. Okay. All right. Any questions on this before I, uh, I move on? Okay, and so how do we view this, okay? And so the fact that we have a decreasing salvage value, you know, and this takes place over a year, you know, we have to kind of um, take, we have to take the interest rate into account, okay? And I think the easiest way to do this is actually to kind of draw a, uh, a cash flow diagram associated with this. Okay. okay. And so I'm going to make two time points. So I'm going to have one time point at t minus one. Okay. Um, and then another time point at time t. Okay. So t represents, you know, the time that you're uh, um, that you're putting it in. Okay. All right. And so um, you know, the way the way that this is generally thought of is that if you choose if you choose to forego or you choose to keep um, your asset for one more year. Okay. So if you choose to keep your asset for one more year, that's almost like saying that you're, um, you're taking what money that you could have gotten from the salvage and you're basically kind of giving it up. Okay. Okay. And so one way that we can actually represent that since this is, you kind of almost think of it as a, as, as a loss of the salvage value, right? So by choosing not to, not to sell it now, it's almost like we're kind of losing that, that money. Right. And so one way that we can, um, 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 kind of represent this is like an investment. Okay. So if you draw a down arrow where the magnitude of the down arrow is going to be our current salvage value. What we get, um, you know, once we give up our current salvage value and, and say that we choose to, uh, to sell it a year later, you know, we can, uh, we can kind of uh, input the new salvage value as an up arrow on the other side. Okay. Okay. And usually, you know, the new salvage value will be less than the old one in terms of magnitude. Okay. But this is kind of the cash flow diagram that we typically expect. Uh, for that for that case. Okay, so if you choose not to sell this year, you're giving up the old salvage value But then if you sell it next year, then you're earning that salvage value back. Okay, but at an at a new value because it's it's the new one okay? 
And so um, the, the, um, the significant thing is that, you know, in between here and here, one year is going to pass or one time period will pass. Okay. And since we know that the value of money changes with time due to the interest rates, we need to uh, account for this um, there, okay? And so let's compute the value of, of this current salvage value and let's compute it at time t, okay? And so um, let's see. And then I'm gonna also draw in the operational cost too. Okay? So the operational costs here in orange are gonna be basically the maintenance cost that we have to pay out in year T. So that's, that's gonna to add to our marginal costs, okay? And so our formula for the marginal cost is given by the following, okay? Okay, so I'll call that MC, okay? And so our MC is gonna be um, our, old, our current salvage value, Since we're moving that ahead in one year, that's gonna be F over P, right? Because we wanna compute everything at this time T right here so that we're moving it forward one time, right? So that's F over P, I, and then just one, okay? And so these are the costs. So I'm making the, mind, the, the down arrows positive and the up arrows negative, okay? And so from this, we're gonna subtract the new salvage value And then to this, I'm gonna add the operational costs or maintenance costs, okay? Okay. And so there's the formula that we're gonna to use to compute the operational costs, okay? All right. And so you can look up this F over P factor in the table, but it's actually, you know, pretty simple. So we can just use the, the formula for this. And so the formula for this is just gonna be one plus I raised to the N power, but N is just one, okay? And so to compute just a, a simpler formula that you don't have to go to the tables for, you can say that marginal cost is equal to current salvage value times one plus I minus new salvage value plus the operational cost, okay? All right, any questions on this before we, uh, we jump into an example? Okay. All right. So in this example, let's say that we uh, we just purchased a new uh, a, a new um, a new piece of equipment. Okay. okay. And so let's say that the initial cost is going to be twenty five thousand dollars. Uh, the maintenance is going to be two thousand dollars, okay, in year one. Okay. Then after year one, it's going to be increasing by five hundred dollars per year. In addition to this, we're going to add an additional cost each year uh, just, uh, just from the risk of it breaking down. Okay, so remember what we talked about last time is that you can add an additional yearly cost just, just from the percent chance that you know, your machine just might just totally break. Okay. All right, so mathematically, it's, it's just gonna be, an, you can, it's just gonna be a, an additional maintenance cost each year, uh, but the interpretation here is, is a little bit different. And so this isn't this normally isn't a cost that you would actually pay out, um, but it's like kind of like some insurance that you can say you know if our machine breaks down then we've kind of accounted for it a little bit in our in our numbers. Okay. 
Okay, so the risk of breakdown is going to be $5,000 per year uh, for the first three years. Okay. Then after year, um, year three, so starting in year four, it's going to increase by $1,500 per year. And so if we consider a time period of seven years, okay? And so we can keep, basically we can keep this machine for a maximum of seven more years. Okay. Um, and our interest rate is 15%. Uh, let's compute the uh, the marginal costs. Okay. 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 And so to actually do this problem, we're going to need one more piece of information, and, and um, that information is going to be how the salvage values decrease over time. And so I have a table for that on the next page. So usually, you know, for these problems, um, I'm going to give you either, you know, the exact, um, you know, way that the salvage values change over time, um, or I'll give you a way to compute it. So this is not something that you would know how to do on your own. Okay. Okay. Uh, but before I, I write that down, are there any questions on, on this? Okay. Okay, so in this in this problem, um, the salvage values are given to you basically as, as a table. I have a question about the breakdown. Yep. Uh, what does that really mean? So do we spend $5,000 per year or we don't? So we're, we're going to account for it in our calculations, but it's, it's not something that you're going to be actually paying out in, in practice. So um, the way that you can kind of think of this is that, um, you know, um, you know, if, uh, if, there, if our machine breaks down, then, you know, we have to buy a new, one, right? And so, but we don't know if there's going to be a breakdown every year. And so what we're saying for this problem is basically that, you know, for the first three years, our machine actually has like a 20% chance of breaking down, right? Um, because we're assigning basically $5,000 worth of risk for that. And so uh, this, is, this is just one, this is kind of just the, simp the simplistic way that we computed um, breakdown risk last time, where we just, you just take the percentage chance that something's going to break down, and then you multiply that by the initial cost. And so what we're saying here for the first three years, um, we have a 20% chance of breaking down. So we take our initial cost, multiply by 20% and we get $5,000. Um, and so um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not quite the perfect thing because if, you know, say it breaks down in year one, then we have to pay, we actually have to buy a new one. So that's a $25,000 cost. But this is one way to kind of account for the risk, um, you know, economically. So it's, I, I'm, I will say that it's, it's it, this is probably the most simplistic way to do it. Um, but, you know, there's definitely more sophisticated ways to come up to come up with the risk because there's, there's just a lot of uncertainty that's, um, um, that's associated with it, but this is just one way that we can do it. So I just wanted to kind of give you an example just to show how it is. Um, so in reality, you know, 20% is actually kind of huge. Um, you don't want to buy a piece of equipment and with the 20% chance that it's just going to totally break on you. But um, this is just kind of just a, just a simple example for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And so the salvage values are given by the following. So, so let's say that you know we bought this piece of machinery from uh, from a store with a really nice return policy. So if we if we buy it and we return it right away, then we'll get the full thing back. So let's say in year zero, we have um, 
a salvage value of 25,000. Okay. And so that's, that's just the case, you know, if we, we didn't use it at all, we just simply returned it. Okay. And so starting in year, in year one, the salvage values are going to go down with time. Okay. So year one, we have 22,000. Year three, we have uh, 19,000. Uh, or year two, sorry. And year three, we have uh, 16,000. And then 13,000. And then 7,000. And then 4,000. Okay. And so you can see by the end, by the time you reach year seven, then it's going to basically almost be almost worthless. Okay. Okay. And so now we have all the information we need to compute the marginal costs. Okay. Because so remember, our marginal costs. Uh, is going to be given by, um, you know, current salvage. Okay. Times um, one plus I minus new salvage. Okay. Plus op costs. Okay. And so just like, you know, we have been doing for the last few weeks, um, the best way to, uh, to compute this is to just organize it with a table. So, um, you know, this is another great, uh, great candidate for Excel to kind of help you out here. Uh, but I'll do the first one, this first one by hand, just so you can see, you know, how it's done. Okay. Okay. So I think I'll, I'll probably start it on the next page, just so I have room to uh, to include everything. So, are there any questions on just this uh, this page right here? Could you say what's written in that formula again? Is that one plus i? Yeah, it's one plus i. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So the uh, the headings for the table will be the following. So our first column will be the year, uh, and so that's you know same as usual. So I'm gonna go one zero one. I'm actually just gonna start with one in this case, because remember the marginal cost is the cost to keep it for you know x amount of years. So in order to actually do that, we actually have to keep it for at least one year. So I'm gonna start at year one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Okay, so we're gonna have one column for the old salvage, or the current salvage, I should say. So old and current salvage is, is kind of interchangeable. Another column for the new salvage. Okay. We have one column for the maintenance. Another column for the breakdown. Okay. And then finally, the last column will be the marginal cost. Okay. Okay. And so um, in year one, remember the old salvage value or the current salvage value, that's the salvage value that we would obtain if we had sold it the previous year. And so in year one, you know, the previous salvage value in this case would be the salvage value at year zero, which is 25,000, okay? And so our first value here for the old salvage in year one is gonna be 25,000, okay? And then if we do sell it in year one, then we obtain the, uh, um, the, the new salvage value here, which is 22,000, okay? All right. And so our maintenance cost for the first year is going to be 2000. Our breakdown risk is going to be 5000. Okay. And then remember for this formula, uh, for this marginal cost here, we're not simply just going to add across the columns. We have to, we have to do, um, you know, we have to do the formula for the previous page. Okay. And so we're going to have MC is equal to old salvage. times one plus I minus new salvage okay, plus any operational costs. Okay? And so in this case, we have two sources of operational costs. We're gonna um, add together the maintenance and then we're gonna add together the breakdown risk. Okay. okay. All right, so if we apply that formula for this first row right here, what we get is 13,000. 750, okay. okay? 
And so when you're making these marginal cost tables, remember, don't just add across the columns like, like you did in the, uh, in the previous ones. You have to actually apply the formula for the marginal cost. Okay, okay. Uh, so that's, the, that's how you compute the first row. And so I'm gonna basically fill in all the rest of the rows here. And so this, this table is in the notes, so don't, uh, um, you know, if you don't want to copy all this down, it's, it's all there for you. Okay. Okay. As you can see, our marginal cost in the second year went up um, by uh, $50, um, $500. That's because our maintenance is going up, right? Starting in year four, remember our breakdown risk is going to start increasing. So we go from 5,000 to 6,500. Okay, almost done. Okay. And so here, you know, after we take all these into account, here is our marginal cost. So if we keep it for one more year, you know, it's gonna cost us 13,750. And then if we keep it for all the way for seven years, for that seventh year, it's gonna cost us $20,000 and 50, 20,000, um, 20,050, I guess. So there's a little bit of typo there. It's gonna cost us over $20,000 to keep it for that, for that amount of time. And so you can see, you know, the, uh, the marginal costs are going up, right? <coughs> Which is generally what you expect for an aging piece of equipment. So, you know, the longer you keep, uh, you keep a piece of equipment, the more it's gonna cost you to, uh, to maintain it year to year, okay? All right, any questions on, uh, on this, how we obtain these numbers? Can you just go back to the previous slide? Sure. Nineteen thousand. Sound good. Okay. All right. Any more questions on on this? Yeah. Um. How did you get twenty two thousand on year one? For uh, for this new salvage. Yeah. Yeah. So remember the new salvage value. That's the salvage value that you would obtain if you sold it for for that in that year. And so um, the way we got that from this table is that uh, we basically just looked at year one. And so if year one, if we sold our, um, our piece of equipment, then we would obtain $22,000. Uh, so that's how, we, that's how I got this number right here. Um, so if you look at actually the old salvage value and the new one, um, they're actually, you know, they, they all read from the same table. It's just that the new salvage value is kind of offset by one, okay? And so one thing that you can do to kind of check your work is that the new salvage value should be you know, whatever was in the next entry up here, okay? And so you can see that these values are the same. Right? And, that's, uh, and that's by design. So, you know, in year two, you know, if the, uh, the old salvage value that you're giving up is 22,000, which was the new salvage value for the previous year. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's how we compute marginal cost. But remember, this is, this is only you know, half the battle. 
because uh, in reality, um, you know, in order to find out if you should replace this, is you have to compare this marginal cost uh, with the minimum EUAC of a new piece of equipment. And so uh, our next example here is we're going to do an economic life calculation on the exact same machine. So we're going to take the same machine into account. Um, and then we're going to see, you know, when should we replace this old machine with an identical one? Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay. So this is an example of just, a, just another type of calculation that we did, um, you know, on Tuesday. Uh, but it's just going to be with the different numbers. Okay. And so let's take the exact same stat, so the same exact same initial cost and maintenance breakdown, um, and let's convert everything to a, a uniform series. Okay. And this will give us the uh, the economic life. And minimum EUAC. Okay. Okay. And then when we compare this um, minimum AUAC to our marginal costs, it'll tell us when is the best time to buy um, a replacement identical machine. Okay, so this is kind of the other half of the replacement analysis where we find uh, minimum EUAC, okay? And so let me um, uh, quantify everything, okay? And so let's take all of our cash flows from the previous example and convert them to a uniform series, okay? And so first we have our initial cost. Okay, and so our initial cost was $25,000, okay? And if we wanna convert this to a uniform series, we need an A over P, uh, 15% and N, okay? And so remember, we're gonna evaluate this for various values of, of N, okay? okay? Next, we have our maintenance costs. And so our maintenance cost was a, was a $2,000 each year, okay? Plus our gradient, okay? And so our gradient was $500. And, it, and then to convert this to a uniform series, we have to multiply by an A over G, okay, 15%, and N, okay. All right, now we have the, our breakdown. Okay. And so our breakdown is interesting because, uh, you know, it was equal to 5,000 for the first three years, okay. Okay. And so if N is less than or equal to three, then we have 5,000. And then after, after uh, year three, so starting in year four, we have an increasing um, value of 1,500. Okay. And so this is, this is actually really strange because we have to convert this gradient, which doesn't start until year four, um, into a uniform series which spans the entire time. So actually, I'm actually going to do this with three different conversions. Okay. So first, uh, I'm going to convert that gradient into a single sum. So I'm going to convert a P over um, the gradient to a P. I'm going to do P over G, 15%, and then N minus 2. Okay. And, the, and so that has to do with the fact that, you know, the, the gradient doesn't start until year 4, right? right? Then I'm going to multiply by P over F. Okay. And so I'm going to take that, um, um, that future sum, and I'm going to bring it back to the present day. So this is going to be P over F. 
and then uh, two. Okay. Sorry, these should be three. I don't know why they're two. Because it doesn't start until year four, right? Okay. Professor? Yep. Mm -hmm. Does that say n minus three? n minus three, yes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the final factor is we, uh, we need to spread this, pre now that we have something that's in the present day, year zero, and now we need to spread it out over, over our entire time. So this is gonna be an A over P, 15%, and N, okay. All right. And then our salvage value is gonna be, um, I'll do that on the next page, okay. All right, any questions on, on this? Okay. Okay, and our salvage values will look like the following. Right, so our salvage value is gonna be uh, minus salvage, right? So remember we're doing a minus sign here because it's, a, uh, it's gonna be a positive cash flow, okay? So we will multiply by A over F and then 15% and then N. So that one's pretty simple. And where we get this salvage value right here from the table. Not the compound interest table, but the, the table that I gave you on the previous, uh, on the previous page. Okay. okay. Oh, hang on. Okay, yes. So these, uh, so actually this should be, uh, these actually should be two. So I'm looking at my notes again. And so, sorry, so the, so the breakdown factors, it should be N minus two and then two right there. Uh, so I'm looking, I'm looking at the cash flow diagrams in the notes and, and, th uh, and two seems to make the most sense. Okay. That's right, because remember the gradients don't start, uh, so the first year on the gradients is gonna be blank. And then, since, and then since our gradient starts in year four, or that's the first year that we see the increase, when we turn it back to a, uh, um, you know, a single sum, it's actually gonna be in year two. And so that's why that's, uh, there's two right there. Sorry about that. Let me let me draw a figure for that just to just to kind of drive that home because it's a little bit confusing. Okay. okay. And so let's say that we have a cash flow diagram like this. And so this is this is just explaining the the gradient factor from the previous page. And so remember, for our breakdown risk, we it doesn't start until year four, right? Okay. And so starting in year four, we have an increase of uh, 1,500, and then year five is gonna be 3,000, and then in year six, it's gonna be 4,500, and then so on and so forth, okay? And then what we wanna do is we wanna take this gradient, and we wanna convert it into a uniform series over this entire period, okay? And so the first conversion factor that I applied was a P over G, 15% and N minus two, okay? And so what that does is that it converts this guy okay? It converts that guy into a single sum on year two, right? And so, because remember, you know, when you when you have a gradient, the first year is blank, and so when you actually apply a P over G, it actually gets put on the year before, two years before when it starts increasing. So if it starts increasing on year four, then we put the the P value on year two. Okay. Okay. And so the next factor that we uh, applied was a P over F, fifteen percent two. Okay. Why do you have an n minus two and not just two? Yeah, so the n minus two is because in this case, the, uh, um, our gradient doesn't start until year four. So let's say that you know, for this particular problem, n is equal to six, right? And so since this gradient kind of starts two years late, um, then I have it as n minus two. So because it actually takes place at one, two, three, four here. So it starts here 
And so the number of a, a blue square there is, is four. So that's why uh, I take n minus two, because that's, that's the amount of time that the gradient is gonna be acting. Um, and so if we had, you know, if we, this thing went to seven years, then we would have the gradient be, it would, it would be active on five years right back. So the way that you can compute that for any value of n, in this case, is just to do n minus two. And then the last factor that we uh, apply, the very third, the third one, is going to be a over p, 15% uh, and n. Okay. okay. And so that will take that sum and then spread it out over the entire the entire time. Yeah. So remember, you always have to be careful with these gradients, especially the ones that start late. And you're plugging in the right numbers for the for the ends in here. Okay. Are those down arrows not coming from year three? Oh no, they're not. So they're these are these down arrows are just kind of like transfer. And so like say that uh, you know we we applied this conversion right here, um, and then this is like the new cash flow diagram that we obtained. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that one was tricky because there, we had to apply three conversion factors, but this is but this is kind of basically the logic that I used to uh, to do that. Are there uh, any questions on on this? Okay. All right. So let's draw our let's uh, write out our table for our um, economic life calculation. Okay. I'm sorry. Could you go back for a second? Sure. I'm I'm kind of behind. I'll just take a picture so it goes faster. Okay. Yeah, and, and I post these notes. Um, I post the you know the live lecture notes too, so you can you'll you'll have those available to you online as well. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And so let's make our table for our economic life calculations. Because now that we have an expression that converts uh, everything in this problem into an e into a uniform series, we can basically just make a table and just sum them up. Okay. okay. And so our first column is going to be uh, years. Okay. And so this is going to start at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right. Oh, question. Okay. All right, next we have our initial cost. Right. Next we have our maintenance. I'm shorting these a little bit just because I, I know that I'm gonna run out of room. Okay. okay, next we have our breakdown cost. Next we have our salvage. And then finally, our EUAC. Okay. And so um, what we have to do here is we're basically just going to fill in this table using the formulas that we developed. OK. And so let's go ahead and fill in the initial cost. So the initial cost, if we plug in n is equal to 1, will be 28,750. Um, OK. Then we have 15. 377.5. Okay. Then we have 10,950. Right. Then we have 8,757.5. Then okay. 7,400. 57.5, okay. okay, and then 6605, then 6010, okay. All right, so now let's do the maintenance.
Okay, so those are all the maintenance costs. Now we have the breakdown. Okay, and so for the first three years, our breakdown costs yearly is going to be five thousand. Okay, and so starting in year four, that's where we're going to have uh, our gradient start. And then our salvage values, which are going to be negative, are given by the flow. Okay, and so since this is an economic life calculation, we've already basically converted uh, everything to a uniform series. And so to compute the EUAC, we can just simply just add across the add across the columns. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and do that. Professor, for is it thirteen thousand one hundred thirteen or it's seven seven three? It's seven seven three. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I missed a row. Fourteen thousand. We are adding across here, right? Wait a second. We are adding across right here. Yeah. So here, here we can just simply add across. Because we've already converted these all into the same form, right? So since they're all in uniform series, we can just add them simply. Um, but for the marginal cost, they uh, they weren't all in the same form. So we, uh, especially because you know our new salvage value and our old one, those take place at different times. So that's why we had to apply our, our formula for that. Okay, and so from this, um, remember, once we've, once we've computed the EUAC, we have to go look into the table and to find out where is the minimum one. Okay? So in this case, our minimum EUAC actually takes place in year one, uh, which is a little bit strange. Um, usually it doesn't happen like this, um, but I think because the breakdown risk is so high that it's, uh, it kind of happens like this. And so the minimum EUAC, is gonna be uh, 13,750, okay? For an economic life, of one year, okay? And so what this analysis basically told us that it's, it's most economically efficient to buy the machine, use it for one year, and then sell it and then just buy a new one and just keep doing that every year. So, you know, um, most of the time you don't want to be doing this because it, it's a little bit um, inconvenient. Um, and so I know, you know, last time we talked about don't get into, don't get suckered into, uh, you know, misleading lines of thought, but having to replace a major machine, you know, this must be a major machine because it costs 25,000 every single year is, 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 is going to be a big hassle. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of one thing to keep in mind, right? Okay, and so now let's compare this um, to our, mar our marginal cost, okay? And so let's let's uh, kind of remember this number, 13,750. Uh, and then what? remember what we said was that if the marginal cost was ever greater than this, um, then we would have to buy, then it would be more efficient to buy a new machine rather than pay more money to keep it running for, a sink for one more year, okay? All right, so let's go back to our previous example, to our marginal cost table, and find out when is the, uh, the marginal cost exceed 13,750. And so if you look at this table, that occurs in year two, right? So in year two, we have a marginal cost of 13,800, which is greater than our minimum EUAC um, that we computed from, um, 
from this, this next example, okay? And so what this tells us is that after we use our machine for one year, then the most effective thing is to just sell it and then buy a new one, because it would cost more to keep that machine running than it would be to buy a new machine um, and then just install that. One. So it's, it's kind of almost the same thing with how printer inks work nowadays. So, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's a lot more expensive to buy a new printer ink, and it's actually cheap, cheaper just to buy a new printer. So this is kind of the, uh, um, that's kind of what inspired this, uh, this example. Um, but most of the time, this, this is not going to be the case, but it's uh, just the numbers for this one just kind of ended up just being like that. Okay, okay. Uh, so to just to summarize, you know, these, these two examples that we just did now, this kind of summarizes the whole process to do a replacement analysis. Okay? And so the first part, you know, you have to, you have to first compute the marginal costs um, of, uh, of maintaining your current piece of equipment. Okay? So basically, how much, how much is it going to cost you to keep it running for one more year or two more years or three more years? Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to compare that to the numbers that you get from the economic life calculations uh, where you compute the minimum EUAC. Okay? And if at any point the marginal cost exceeds the minimum EUAC, uh, which in this case it does in year two, then the best thing to do economically would be to replace the machine. Okay. Okay. Any questions on uh, on this, on these two examples here? Why we couldn't like replace the machine by year three, and the difference is gonna be only like a hundred bucks, but after year three, the difference is almost like two thousand. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, if we if we wait until year four, you can see the, the big thing that happens in year four is that our breakdown risk um, jumps pretty significantly right here. Um, and our maintenance costs is, is also increasing right there too. Uh, and so since, you know, we have a, what the problem is basically saying is that since we have a much greater risk of breakdown starting in year four, that's going to add, you know, additional risk, uh, additional costs to our, our margin costs uh, right there. And so that big jump that you see between years three and four is, is mostly due to this breakdown cost just uh, just increasing quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's do. Uh, I'm going to do one more example um, just to kind of drive this home because it is it is kind of a long process of kind of. In order to do one replacement analysis, you kind of have to do two problems at the same time. So I want to kind of just do a problem where, you know, we kind of see the whole process um, kind of over again. Okay. okay. And so in this example, let's say that, you know, we're working for a local bakery. Okay. okay. Um, and this bakery is, is considering a replacement for one of their ovens. Okay. And so um, basically what we have is we have an existing oven, uh, which has its maintenance costs and, and all the things associated with that. And they're, they're basically going on, um, you know, uh, Amazon or Ikea or whatever, you know, and they're looking at buying a new oven. Okay. Okay. Um, and so um, let me just give you the numbers for, for each of these. Okay. Um, because, and so what we want to find out, or let me, let me write out the, the problem statement first is uh, uh, first let's compute the marginal cost for the existing oven, okay? And two, um, let's compute the uh, economic life and e minimum EUAC of the new oven. And then from this information, from parts one and part two, um, let's determine, you know, if it's uh, if it's worth it to replace, and if so, when. Okay. Okay. And so here are the numbers. Okay. Okay. So here are the numbers for the old oven. Okay. 
right? So let's say that uh, we're going to consider it for, for four years. Okay. And so those are our years. Okay. And so let's list out the salvage values, okay, for the old oven. Remember, those salvage values are going to decrease over time. And then let's also list out the maintenance. Okay. Okay. And so if we sell the uh, the oven today, um, then we're gonna get we can get twenty thousand dollars for it. Okay. In year one, if we sell it one year later, we can we can get seventeen thousand. In year two, we can get uh, 14,000 for it. In year three, we can get uh, 11,000. In year and in year four, we get 7,000. Okay. And if we sell it to GameStop, we'll get like 750 in store credit. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, and so the maintenance now. So the maintenance. Let's say that uh, if we keep it for one more year, it's going to cost us $9,500 to maintain it. Year two is going to be uh, 9,600. Okay. Year three is going to be 9,700. And year four is going to be 98. Okay. And so that's the stats for the old oven. Okay. Okay. And so let's list out the stats for the new oven. And so the new oven is just going to have a, a salvage value and a maintenance as well. So I guess the new oven they're considering is, is buying from Costco because uh, you know they have great return policy, and so if you if you sell the oven right after you buy it, um, you can get back the full cost of eighty thousand okay? dollars. And so that's that's basically the cost that you that we're paying for it. Okay, okay we sell it one year later, then we get uh, seventy seventy five thousand back. Okay, one year after that is seventy thousand. Next uh, year is 66. And then finally, year four is going to be um, 62,000. Okay. Okay. So the maintenance. So in year, uh, if we keep it for, if we just sell it immediately, obviously we don't need to maintain it. Okay. And let's say for this oven, um, you know, when, if we, when we purchase it for 85,000, that includes the first two years of maintenance. So the, uh, so the first two years of, the, of maintenance on the new oven are going to be zero. And starting year three, um, you know, we're gonna have a maintenance cost of one thousand dollars, and then in year four, our maintenance is gonna be three thousand. So you can see the maintenance costs are a lot less for the new oven, uh, which is generally what you expect for a new piece of equipment. So let's say you know the old oven probably is something that's maybe like 10, 12 years old. So that's why you know there's a big disparity in the uh, in the numbers there. Okay. Okay. And so now that we know the numbers, we're we're equipped basically to to finish um, you know those two parts of the problem. And so first, we're going to compute the marginal cost for the new oven, um, or for the old oven, sorry. And then, uh, then we're, going to, we're going to compute the economic life and minimum EUAC of the new oven. Okay. Uh, so before I do that, are there uh, any questions on the uh, on this problem or any of the numbers here? Uh, why do games depreciate so much? <laughs> uh, like so, so fast. Yeah. So the. Uh, that that's that's a that's that can be a, a long discussion too. But I think I think the reason you know GameStop uh, they have that is because you know like so if you think about it, GameStop is the only uh, uh, only store that actually offers that service. So the fact that you know they can actually rebuy games is a uh, um, is a big deal. And so just to make sure that their company stays afloat, I think then that's why their the resale price is really bad. But um, but yeah, I, I remember uh, yeah taking a big box of like old PS2 and GameCube games to GameStop one day and. I was uh, very disappointed with how much uh, money that they can do. <laughs> yeah, I took a whole box of original Xbox games and I got like 30 bucks. Oh yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It happens, but it's, uh, um, so it's, it's better I think to sell it on like Craigslist or something if you really want to get into that. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, um, um, 
yeah so let's uh, so let's do this one um let's start with the marginal cost so there are there any uh, any other questions on on this okay okay I'll pull my notes again okay and so we're going to make the same table for our marginal cost here so um And so our marginal cost, we're going to have one column for the years, okay? And since we have four years, I'm going to do four just like that. Okay. okay. Then we're going to list our old salvage value, then our new salvage. Okay. Here we just have a maintenance cost. So we don't have to worry about any anything breaking down. Okay. And then we finally have our marginal cost. Okay. Okay. And so in year one, remember the old salvage value, what we put in that column is the salvage value for the previous year. Okay. And so if we're selling it in year one, like this, okay, then the old salvage value would be the, the, um, the value that's right above it. So it would be 20,000. And then the new salvage for that year would be the actual salvage value for that year, which would be 17,000. Okay. Right. Then our maintenance cost would be uh, 9,500 for that year. Okay. And then to compute our marginal cost, remember we, do, we for marginal cost, we don't add across the columns. For here, we have to apply our formula. Okay. So I'm not going to write it down again because it's, it's, it's a little bit long. But remember, it involves using the interest rate, which I don't think I gave you for this problem. Um, interest rate is 10%. Okay. okay. And so if we apply that formula, then we, what we get is a marginal cost of 14,500 for that first year. Okay. Let me fill in the rest of the table. Okay, so there are our marginal costs, okay? And so you can see from this problem, you know, the marginal costs actually go down um, initially, right? Um, and so this is a, a little bit of a strange thing because usually, you know, you expect the marginal cost to go up over time. Um, and the fact that the marginal costs are going down is because the maintenance is not really going up all that much. So our, our maintenance costs are only going up $100 a year, but we are losing, you know, quite a bit on the salvage value um, as well. Um, and so because we have those two competing things, that's why you see the marginal cost dip down a little bit at first. Um, but then, you know, in year four, you can see it, it comes back up once the, once the salvage value kind of, uh, you know, we lose uh, quite a bit on that. Okay. Uh, okay. So here are our marginal costs. And so in order to determine whether we need to replace it, we need to compute the, uh, um, um, the minimum EUAC of the new oven. Okay, so I'm not going to write out the formulas for, for each of these, but um, but you can imagine that. Uh, remember, when you were doing EUAC and economic life, we have to com we have to compute uh, we have to convert all of our cash flows into a uniform series. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to have the almost the same columns here. So we're going to have our year. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Then we have our initial cost. Then we have our maintenance. Okay. Okay. Then we have our salvage value. 
than our EUAC. Okay. So again, remember, before you plug it into this table, you have to convert it to a, uh, a uniform series. Okay. Okay, and so those are our initial costs. So you can see our initial costs are going down, um, and that's because the longer that you keep the oven, you know, we spread out those initial costs over more years. Okay. All right. Was the initial cost for year one? So our initial cost uh, was eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's eighty thousand dollars times A over P, um, ten percent, and then whatever. And our maintenance, remember for the first two years, we're not gonna have any maintenance costs, okay? So in starting in year three, that's when we start to have maintenance. Okay? And so converting that to a uniform series, so that's gonna be 302.1, okay? Um, and then for year four, that's gonna be 883.49, okay? And so even though these are, uh, there's a uniform series and a gradient here, the fact that it doesn't start until year three, you have to do some kind of interesting conversions for that. All right, and here are our salvage values. Okay. And since all of these have already been converted to a uniform series, we can just simply add across. Okay. Okay, and so now that we have we've computed our EUACs, we can find the minimum one, and we can see that our minimum EUAC takes place in year three, and that's twelve thousand five hundred thirty-one. Okay. Okay. So what this tells us is that if we if we buy this new oven, it's going to be most optimal to keep it for three years, and if we keep it for three years, then our yearly cost is going to be twelve thousand five hundred thirty-one dollars. Okay. Okay. All right, and so let's compare this into our margin, compared to our marginal cost that we got above. And we can see that this 12,531 is less than all of the marginal costs that we computed before, okay? And so the best thing to do in this case is to replace, okay? Okay, because it's gonna be more economically efficient to just buy a new oven um, than it would be to just, to, to just to keep the old one running. And so going by these calculations, we'd save about $2,000 per year if we, uh, if we compare just kind of the marginal cost for the first year and the EUAC for, for three years right there, okay? Okay, any questions on, on this example here? So you're comparing the EUAC from year three to the first year's marginal cost? Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so whatever you find to be the minimum, and then you compare that to um, the marginal cost. So it could be, you know, most of the time it's going to be year one. This is kind of a unique example because the marginal costs actually go down. But usually the marginal cost in the first year are, is going to be the minimum one. So you, com you compare the minimum marginal cost to the minimum EUAC, and you see which one's bigger than the other one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the, the last example that I have planned. So um, there's kind of one more just note that I want to make. Um, not really a note, but you can, but um, what you, what you should have noticed, you know, throughout this entire week that we kind of ignored taxes, right? And so we didn't account for taxes in our replacement analysis, but, you know, in reality, you know, you do have to account for taxes. Um, so we won't, we won't be doing any of those calculations here because, you know, the, the numbers get really hairy, but I just wanted just to kind of emphasize that, you know, that when you're, when you're doing this calculations in practice, whether for your personal life or for professional life, um, you know, make sure to include taxes as well. Uh, all right, so that's all we got time for uh, this week. Um, so I have a new minute paper up on Canvas, so definitely feel free to fill that out if you want. Um, but you know, even if you do or you don't, I uh, uh, just want to thank everyone for tuning in this week. Um, so next week we're going to start on last unit on economics, which is going to be inflation. Okay.
And then after next week, then we're going to say goodbye to economics. Right, so, uh, so thank you, everybody. Um, hope everyone has a good rest of your day. I have office hours at four um, if you want to stop in and ask any questions. Uh, but if not, have a good weekend, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Or did you guys have any more questions? <laughs>